going on everybody? This is Brandon down here at Snake River Fly. Uh, we're tying a synthetic, uh, or all synthetic version of the Copper Zonker, uh, one of our favorite bugs for chasing smallmouth and trout down on the snake system. Um, but working with the mylar and building the belly can be a pain in the butt sometimes. So we're going to use um, our crinkles on in that new copper color to create that belly, uh, make it a little bit easier on us, and then some techno bunny over the top. Um, and so the hook that I have in the vise right here is the MFC Kelly Gallup streamer hook. This one's at number one. Tie it in a variety of sizes. This one kind of meets right in the middle. Uh, thread I'm using is a six aught fluorescent red from Semperfly. And we're gonna start our thread here, right at the eye, work our way back, laying down a decent thread base, about a quarter of the hook shank. And then um, we're gonna be putting some dumbbell eyes on this guy. These are gold and large. Mediums will work on this one as well. Um, you know, depending on the color scheme you go, you can mix and match your eyes. I like the golds, yellows, whites um, for this particular one. And so I'm gonna measure out basically an eye width or barbell eye width back. So where I wanna place my eyes, we're gonna attach those with those figure eighting wraps. I'm sure that you guys have seen this done a million times, so we're not gonna talk about it too much. But just some good X wraps and then some saddle wraps under the knee, underneath to lock those suckers in place. All right, so make sure that they're nice and straight here. And this is where we magically apply some super glue of some, or something of that nature to lock those eyes in. And now I'm gonna build just a little thread pad here behind the eyes and we're gonna come in with a, a generous clump of that copper crinkles on. We're gonna make sure that it's all nice and straight out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do almost 70-30, I guess, on this guy measure that out the back. I'm gonna have some hanging out the front. I'm now going to capture that behind the eyes with a few tight wraps. I kind of roll that up, gets it all stuck together. That way it's out of the way. And then on the body here, just like you're tying a classic clouser, the crinkles on clouser, we're gonna do some jumping wraps back over this guy to the bend and then make finish that up with some X's locking that material in place and then giving our techno bunny a place to kind of rest um, when we go to uh, puncture that on there. And so I'm gonna jump my thread up here to the eye. I'm gonna pull that copper over, attach that down, cinch it down pretty tight. I'm now going to come back underneath my eyes. Thread here, I'm gonna pull that whole unit back and lock it down. Right, so by doing that, it's given a little bit of flare. We're creating some belly here um, and you know, building some volume to the belly of that fly for our proportions. Um, and so now jumping back in front, I don't want to come over top because I'm going to leave a th uh, you know, basically tracks here. You're going to see where my thread is going, so I'm going to come underneath and then forward. So now we got this tied in here, we're going to take another clump of that crinkles on. And we're gonna basically split that, you know, roughly 50-50. I don't want it to go, you know, almost full length here. We're gonna set that down in front of those eyes, loose capturing wrap here, pull that down tight and kind of adjust it here. And then we're gonna fold this front section back, capture, put some wraps over the top of it. And now you kind of got this weird kind of mohawk looking kind of deal. Now the cool thing about the crank is you can come in, roll your fingers on it, kind of pinch that material and it all wants to kind of meld together. And now you can see we've created that ramp, and now we have this really nice smooth taper and belly um, with this crinkles on. And so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna invert our fly, flip that over to the top side. Now we're gonna take some Techno Bunny, and this is in the sand color. We're gonna cut off a, a generous clump here to work with. And so one thing that I like to do with this stuff, so now this is kind of an optional step, but on the back end here, I'm gonna fold all of this material kind of back to where I just have, you know, I guess the what would be the leather strip, say, on that rabbit, you know, your base. And so now I got all that stuff kind of pulled back out of the way. I'm gonna pinch it. I'm gonna take a lighter here, and I'm just gonna kiss the end of that a couple times and then kind of pinch it. And what that's gonna do is just add some extra durability and kind of form a little bit of a taper here for us. 
this is, like I said, it's not necessary, but I mean, a fish tooth or something like that might come in and, you know, unferrule this off of its, uh, its strip here. So, so what we'll do on this guy here, we're going to lay this on the, you know, on the top of our bug, kind of figure out where that's going to land. If we look at it from this side here, just to get the right length, I'm going to push that straight up against the hook. So right here where it lines up with the bend is where I want to puncture that. So I'm going to, just like a standard rabbit strip, I'm going to preen that apart. I'm going to come in on the point of that hook, center that up, punch it through, pop the hook out of the vise, pull that down. Situate that like so. Pull those fibers back. Lock that sucker in place. So now we can pull that tight, and now we're going to stroke those fibers back on top and I don't want to you know move these around and make a really smooth tie-in point I want to trap some of these fibers down and kind of build this head up a little bit and keep that taper that I'm working with so I'm going to pinch all that back come in with a loose wrap over the top and capture that just right in, right behind the eye of the hook make sure that we're good on both sides got some crinkles on on the loose here Couple wraps in front, lock that down, and then we can come in with our scissors, and trim that front piece out. So this is another point where I could take all of these fibers here and cinch that down, like if you have a cauterizer, kind of lick it with the lighter again if you'd like, but we're just gonna build up a nose, kind of clean up our tracks a little bit here. Once we've got that, come in with a whip finish. Pull it down tight, trim that out. And now we can kind of comb everything out, get that to lay like we want it to, and then we can kind of come in. Don't let your wife catch you doing this unless it's in the garage. All right. So now you have a copper zonker. Cool thing is you can come in, you know, trim this to any length on the water if need be. But I mean, this size right here is kind of our, our bread and butter for the small mouth that we have, even in those, you know, in trout sizes too. Works great in like a number four, number six, or even in bigger sizes. But uh, that right there is the synthetic copper zonker, the techno zonker. Um, all these materials are available on the site. Um, video is going to be available on YouTube and our website as well. Uh, material is linked as well. Uh, so uh, happy tie-in and uh, let's pray for some warm weather and some smallmouth fishing. Thanks, guys.